Hi everyone and welcome to this course. So in this course, you're going to learn the Django REST framework and I'm going to make sure I hold your hand from knowing nothing to being able to build an API with the Django REST framework. Now Django REST framework is a framework on top of Django that can allow you to build web APIs. The beauty with Django REST framework is it comes with most of the things that you may need to implement the common features you may have when building a REST API. So we're going to be looking into Django REST framework and we're going to be covering this in various topics and I'm going to make it as easy for you as possible to understand the Django REST framework. My name is Ali Jonathan and if this is your first time coming to this channel, please consider subscribing as I create a lot of educational programming content on this channel. So let's look at how to set up Django REST framework. So the first thing you will do is to open up a new folder. So I actually have one open, but if you don't have one, what I have to do is to first create one. So I'm going to open up uh, where I code from. So any part of your folder or any folder on your computer or your file system, I'll create a new folder and I'll have to call this Django REST course. So I'm calling main Django REST course, but feel free to call it whatever you may want to call it. So after naming it, I may simply drag and drop this within VS code and this will go ahead and basically open up our folder in VS code. Now that we've been able to do this, let's go ahead and set up a simple Django project. Now, just like I said, Django REST framework allows you to build a REST API based on the Django web framework. What this means is you actually need to have a Django web app or a Django project already set up. And then you go ahead and define your API basing on your Django project. So let's go ahead and set up a Django project. Now I'm going to pull up my terminal right here. And all I have to do is to first create a virtual environment. And the purpose of a virtual environment is to make us be able to store our project dependencies so that we don't have to conflict with those in our system. So to create a virtual environment, I'm using bash, but this command may actually work the same for when you're using PowerShell and when you're using command prompt. So I'm on Windows, but feel free to type the same command on Linux as it's going to help you to create a virtual environment. So the command for Linux may differ a little bit as you may run Python 3 for the Python 3 version you may have on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and run my command. So I have Python and then I'll go ahead and run this with minus M and then I'll go ahead and specify that we need to call virtual env or venv as a command. And then we shall call our virtual environment env. So right after doing this, we are going to go ahead and activate this as well as to install our requirements for our project. Now that our virtual environment has been installed, let's go ahead and activate it with source env. So on Mac or Linux, you may have been, but for Windows, the activate script is located within the script folder. And then I'll go ahead and activate it. So my virtual environment has been activated and I can see that the virtual environment is called env. So within this virtual environment, we have a Python interpreter that kind of gives us our own actually called Python 3. So I have to stop this with control and C and then run Python again. So when I run Python, we now see that we have a version of Python, which is 3.10.0. So I'm going to get out of this with control and Z. And what I have to do is to install Django as well as Django REST framework. So to install Django, I'm going to do pip install Django. And this will go ahead and install Django within our virtual environment. So now that our Django has been installed, we are going to go ahead and basically write this in a requirements file. So the beauty of the requirements file is it helps us to be able to keep track of the exact version of the requirements that we're going to use for our project. Now I'll go ahead and run this command. So I'll run this command, which is pip freeze, or it can be pip3 freeze if you're on Linux or Mac OS. 
so I'll go ahead and pip freeze and then I point to requirements dot txt and this will go ahead and create a file called the requirements so txt file so within this file we can be able to see the version of Django which we have which is the latest version which is 4.0.4 .4. we also have the other dependencies that Django relies on so I'm going to close this for now so the first thing we're going to do is to create our Django project so the Django project is going to allow us to basically know our settings for our entire web app so I'll pull up my terminal again and within our virtual environment I am going to run Python or oh, let's actually explore Django admin so Django admin is actually the command that's provided for us by Django to be able to carry out some management tasks so if I go ahead and run Django admin we actually see it as Django admin.exe because we are on Windows but I'll go ahead and just call it with Django admin and then you can be able to see the various commands that come with Django admin so what I'm going to do is to create a new project using Django admin so the way I'll do that is by coming and saying Django admin and then the command I'm going to use to start our project is going to be start project and after doing that then what I have to do is to mention the name of the project that we're going to create so I'm going to call this project our simple blog project so I'm going to be using an example of a blog project throughout this entire course and I hope you guys find it interesting and may be able to use it within your other projects so right here we're going to have a simple blog project and within this simple blog project I am going to specify that we need it to be created within our current directory now what normally happens is whenever we run our start project command we actually get our project created within our folder and then it has to appear in another folder for example if I came and ran simple blog this is going to go ahead and create a simple blog project and you can see the content it has but the problem with this is we want access to our money.py within our root project folder so I'm going to delete this so if you wondered how I deleted that I'm going to just come here and then click on that what you want to actually delete and then you click delete or you can even press that the delete button so away from that let's go ahead and create this within our root project so I'll come and run the command if you're wondering how I did that I press the up arrow key and then you press dot when you press dot this is actually going to create our money.py file and the contents of our project are actually going to be within the same root project folder now this is interesting so let's go ahead and run our python server so Django gives us a server that we can be able to use in development and this server allows us to be able to check out the changes and be able to actually trace back uh, see various errors that we encounter when developing our web apps with Django so I'm going to come right here and what I have to do is to run Python so let's actually run our money.py file right here so I run Python and then manage.py and when I do this we actually see that we have different management commands available for us so some of these management commands are actually those that we get with the Django admin command so what I'll do is to go ahead and run our python money.py and then run server so basically this is the server command that's going to actually run our server so when you run this we actually see that our server has been started and it is running at local host 8000 so I'm going to click and to control and click on this link and this is actually going to open up our web app here at local host 8000 and right just right here we can actually see that our Django has successfully been installed and our project is working successfully so let us go ahead and install Django REST framework now for us to be able to install Django REST framework what I'm going to do is to come right down here I'm going to stop our server with Ctrl and C 
and after doing that i'm going to go ahead and run pip install and then i'm going to install our django rest framework so this is going to give us the different dependencies that we need for our django rest framework and right after doing this then i'm going to go ahead and pip freeze this to our requirements to txt file so i'll do that with pip freeze and then i point to our requirements to txt file so our Django REST framework has been installed. We can also check that by using pip list. So I can do pip list. And this will go ahead and show us that our Django REST framework has been installed and we're using version 3.13.1, .1, which is now fine. So let us go ahead and set up our Django REST framework. So we're going to be dealing with Django. So we need to create an app. And the way we do that is by using our management commands again. So I'll pull up our Python and then call our manage.py file. So with this, I'm going to run the command that's going to be for start app. And then you have to specify the name of the app. Now, if you're confused about what apps are and what the project is, a project uh, refers to the settings while an app basically has the functionality for a different or the module that contains a certain functionality. So we're going to start our app and this app, we're just going to simply call it posts for now. So this is actually where we're going to have our posts for our simple blogging application. So I'm going to create our app, which is posts. And when I press enter, app, our app is going to be created right here. So we can be able to see the various things that we have within our posts app so once we have that let me actually walk you through the entire project structure so the project is now currently having our blog project and this blog project is basically where we find our settings for our entire Django project within here we have the main urls file which is the urls.py file we have the WSGI file, which is responsible for, let me actually close this. So this is actually responsible for helping us to run our app as a WSGI application. Now you also have our URLs.py, which I actually talked about, and this has our project URLs. Settings.py is the main settings file for our project. So we're going to be exploring this in detail in the coming videos. So. We have asgi.py and this is responsible for running our Django application as an ASGI application. This is when you actually need to run your application asynchronously. So what I'm going to do is to go to our app that we've just from creating and then walk it through the directory structure. So within here, we have our migrations folder. This migrations folder is responsible for keeping track of our migration, something that we're going to look at when you create database models. So we have an admin and this admin is actually responsible for helping us register models into the admin panel, which we're also going to look at. We have the apps and this contains the configuration for a specific app. We have the models file and this is where we actually define classes that define our database tables. So we have tests. If we are trying any unit tests, we write them in this file and then we, write, we have views. So we're going to look into views in a second. So now that we've installed the Android framework, let us go ahead and set it up. So to set it up, I'm going to go within our simple blog project. And then within our settings.py, I am going to go to our install apps. So the install apps contains all the apps that we may have for our project. Now I'm going to begin by adding the app that we've created, which is our post app. So the way I'll do that is by just coming right here and then adding it as posts. And right after adding it as posts, I'm going to also add our Django REST framework. So I'm going to just add a comment here. So these are going to be our third party apps. And within here, I'll add our REST framework. So right after adding our REST framework, I am going to go ahead and save. So just doing this has already set up our web, our web framework. So in the next video, we're going to look into how to set up Django REST framework and how to create our first API view. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.